welcome back. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to level and install these timing chain covers, install the tensioner lines, modify the cylinder baffles for improved cooling, tighten some of the case bolts and show you one that looks suspect. I'm not really sure what to do yet, so if anyone has any ideas, please let me know. I'm also going to go over the exhaust studs. Uh, I found some interesting things on this engine. I really wanna share it with you. I'm also going to show you how to rebuild the throttle plate and install that and protect some of these zinc plated parts. The sump plate, I'm sure there's some other things I'm forgetting as well. Stay tuned, I have some other updates coming up pretty quickly here. All right, so these are some of the parts back from the powder coater. I'm using a uh, Zealous Manufacturing. I'll include a link in the comments, but these parts are beautiful. Um, really excited with how they came out. I don't know if you can see that in the sun, but it's, it's all metallic and has a nice kind of like rainbow effect a little bit. Alright, so check this out. These two studs right here have this necked down area. I think these are the original studs. This one is missing a bunch of the threads on the bottom, so that's cool. This one pulled out. This one is thicker and looks great. And on this cylinder, I got some interesting things going on. This looks like an insert of some kind, uh, but it's not flush with the mating surface for the exhaust gasket. This one is really not flush. When you look up here, there's actually a hole that I can put my pick down into. And you'll see that that's, I don't even know how that's possible because there's, there's no holes on any of these except for this one. So what's up with that? After that kind of disturbing news about the exhaust studs, I just need a win right now, so I'm just going to put in the sump plate just because it looks cool and it's nice and clean. So let's do it. I just got a set of all new bolts for these rocker shafts, so I'm going to go ahead and throw all those in. All right, so one thing that I'm gonna to try to do here is, I don't wanna disturb the case, but this is loose, so I wanna tighten this nut here to bring the case a little tighter here. And then also on the case bolts, this one's wet. Now there's an O-ring underneath that washer. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to loosen this case bolt and see if I can pull it out a little bit and put a new O-ring with some silicone behind here and then um, put it back together. Actually, wait, I don't know if I can do that. So it looks like that washer might be captured. So I don't think I can get to it, which sucks, because you can see that it's, unlike all the other ones, it's just really nasty looking. So I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I don't even know how this comes out. It's like someone forgot to tighten it.
Alright, so both of these look pretty clean. I can't remember if there's supposed to be an o-ring on the back of this guy or not, but I can always change that later. And what I want to do now is install these timing chain covers. I have a new gasket set, but I think just because of aesthetic reasons, I'm going to be reusing the old hardware that I had replated, as opposed to the silver stuff. And these gaskets, the book is saying to put it in dry. I don't trust that, so I'm going to be spraying these gaskets with copper sealer. So it's really important that you don't forget this o-ring, otherwise you're going to be getting leaks right where your cam line runs in. And the other thing in Wayne's book is it says to put a little bit of assembly lube on it. So for the tensioner lines, make sure you use new crush washers on both sides of the banjo bolt. So when I removed this shorty header, um, some of the studs came out, not really a big deal, but what I did find that I wasn't real happy about was that these, this cylinder had double stacked exhaust gaskets and it has some sort of inserts that aren't flush with the mating surface of the cylinder. So what that means is that when I put my header on here, this one would be sticking out whatever that depth is more than all these other ones. What I wanna do is I wanna get this um, to be planar with these other two exhaust surfaces. And I think what I'm gonna do is just dremel this stuff because I really don't wanna snap any of these studs. That would just be a huge ordeal. So I'm just gonna try to dremel this flange off of this thing until I can get the exhaust gasket to sit flush against there. All right, so this is the throttle plate assembly. I'm referencing my phone photo, and I had this powder coated. No one will see this, but it just, I don't know. I just wanted to. I pressed in the new throttle bushings. When I took this car apart, there were no bushings whatsoever, so that should help. All right, so these are my cylinder baffle plates. Um, I got these replated at the plater. They're not perfect, but they're a lot better than they were before. Um, one thing I wanna do to them before I install them is the center ones, not the end ones, these four. Um, you can modify them to get a little more cooling. And you'll see that one side has this zigzag or dent in it and the other side's flat. We wanna remove a piece about like that from the outside of all four of these. I'm just gonna use a tin snip, so hopefully that works.
All right, thanks for watching. That's about it for this video. In the future, I'm gonna show you how to install a Pertronix ignition system in the distributor, install that. I'm gonna do a valve adjustment. Also gonna be installing the flywheel and uh, clutch and everything. So stay tuned, bunch more coming. I wanna get this thing on the road before the snow falls. So it's gonna be a lot more things coming on. If you guys wanna like and subscribe, go for it. If you don't, I don't really care. It's up to you. Oh,